Now let's talk about best practices applied specifically to games within software. We'll begin with an introduction, looking at some of the popular game engines that are out there, and then see how best practices apply to game development. Then we'll wrap things up. Hello and welcome, my name is Samuel Asheravello. I am a Unity certified game developer and I have over 20 years of game dev experience. I've collaborated on over a dozen Unity titles in the last decade or so, including PC, Steam, Xbox, iOS, Android, lots of stuff like that. If you're interested in the topics that you've seen here, we've got even more courses available on demand, everything around 2D game design with Unity, things like UI Toolkit as well, expanding into areas of MVC architecture specifically for Unity and unit testing for C-sharp. And if you're inspired by the practicality of these best practices we're looking at today, you can check out this link here. Link will be below as well and see even more with articles, repos, and different tips specific to gaming. So let's talk about game engines. Game engines are software that are designed specifically for video game development. This usually includes two major parts, code libraries, as well as tooling. Now with Unity as an example, code libraries would include concepts and code related to things like game objects, very central to every day that you're sitting down and scripting inside of a Unity game. And things like tools editors are also included. So you'd have things like a level editor or the game editor itself, a scene graph, ways to organize things in your 2D or 3D world. That's all part of the tooling side. Now, game engine can be appropriate across the entire software development lifecycle, but we typically lean into the game engine in the development phase, number four here. This is probably the bulk of the time that you spend on any given project, but of course, each of these is important in their own way. You can also continue within Unity, for example, in the testing and deployment phases. When you're sitting down to make a game, you've got choices. You can either create your own game engine or choose one of the existing ones that's out there. Now, creating your own game engine is a lot of work. And if you're interested in shipping that title and working on the game features itself, then building on top of an existing engine is the recommendation. There are tons of different game engines that are out there. Here is just a partial list. And some of the very popular ones you may be very familiar with are Unreal, Unity, and Godot. So let's talk a little bit more about each of those. From a very high level, I'm gonna compare them. In the area of ease of use, it includes the onboarding process, being new, getting involved with it, learning the tutorials, actually creating your first game, as well as how easy it is to use on a daily basis. All three of these are great tools, but I'm giving this one to Godot. Regarding community support, the size and the quality of the help that you can find out there for free in the internet, as well as paid courses and its integration into universities and boot camps, there's really nothing that beats Unity. And as far as the quality of the rendering, what is the speed and the efficiency of the output? How pretty are those graphics? I give it to Unreal. Now the popularity of these engines, all three of them are quite well used, but we can see that in different areas of development and different scopes, for example, game jams, Unity is taking the majority share there. As well as in mobile development, Unity is the most popular, as well as in VR, Unity is also the most popular. So if you're interested in the experimentation and the indie side of things from a game jam or deploying to mobile and virtual reality, there's even more resources and perhaps job opportunities using Unity there, but all three can be used. Where we don't see Unity used as much is in AAA game development. There, Unreal has a much larger share and many big companies making AAA commercial games have their own internal proprietary solutions. So not Unreal or Godot or Unity, but something that is specific to their team that perhaps they created internally. As game developers, we have lots of different motivations. For some of us, this is a hobby. We wanna sit down and we wanna have fun. So ease of use is important. For others, it's about creating an independent game, a passion project that you do wanna launch out there in the world, but it's something you're gonna fund yourself and spend your own time doing. That's great as well. And for many game devs like myself, I'm interested in this being my career and being able to find employment opportunities is an important part of the decision process. So I looked around and I also had ChatGPT help me do some search on a few popular areas in job hunting. And I see that Unity takes the cake as far as having the most opportunities. Depending on what type of game is being made, Unreal can also be a dominant force there. And Godot we see in part because it's so new, not as many job opportunities are available yet. So let's take a look at some of the pricing information. 
All three of these engines have a free tier. In the case of Unity and Unreal, if your project becomes profitable, to a certain degree, you need to start revenue sharing, and there may even be some monthly fees involved. Godot is free now and promises to be free forever. So depending what your price tolerance is, you may wanna go with Godot there because of that great deal. Specifically with Unity and the drama around their changing in pricing, if you wanna follow this link, you can input the types of team base you're on, the types of projects you're working on, and see exactly what it will cost for you. For 99.9% .9 of the world, it's free. Now let's see some best practices specifically for game development. First off, game development is software development, but some game devs pretend it's not, like it's some special unique category that doesn't need to have all of the considerations that software does. They might have excuses like, uh, well, gaming needs to be optimized, so it needs to be configured in a different way, or uh, I don't need to have clean code, the compiler is gonna understand it, so who cares? Or I don't have time for this, or I don't have time for that. For example, unit testing. Uh, I don't wanna avoid code duplication. I like to find a great solution and paste it around where it works for me. I mean, there's lots and lots of excuses. You can take a look here. But I say game development is software development. Best practices are here to help. These principles that we've talked about in this video series are important. Standards, design patterns, frameworks, employing architectures are all just as vital inside games. And as we developers know, creating software is tricky. It's not straightforward. There's going to be some surprises. I argue that game dev is even more complicated. The expectations that your users have are higher. Over time, year over year, the graphics, the functionality, the social features, things like multiplayer, they're only increasing time over time. I argue in games, it's accelerating at a faster rate. Building games cross-platform is even more challenging than non-game apps. Due to the rendering, the graphics, taking input, not everything is a mouse-driven or finger-driven experience like a lot of non-game apps are. You need to take into account all of the different complexities there, as well as optimizing. Because we have this larger user expectation, because our games are living, breathing 3D worlds, optimizing them, make them run across all these different platforms offers additional challenges that you don't get in non-game apps. The interactivity is even higher. Of course, having a dozen different input devices and wanting to have them all work well, from joysticks to game pads to mouse and keyboard setups, and even having users that will sit down to your game and want to play it in a completely different way, understanding that some prefer this input and some prefer that, there's more complexity to the interactivity. These games are all real-time interactive experiences, and that offers additional challenges to something that is polling or page-based, like some non-game apps. As I hinted at before, the graphical responsibilities you have in games is really high. Now, a lot of that we can defer to the engine itself to handle the hard number crunching there, but as game devs, it's our responsibility to make sure we optimize on top of that. And finally, there's lots of other systems that you wouldn't expect in non-game apps, including physics, that we need to take into account. So with this in mind, I say that game development is hard software development. It's even more important that we use these best practices in our games. And these best practices will lead to better games. So in conclusion here, let's wrap up. We had a brief introduction. We looked at what a game engine is and saw a few popular options. Now I am a Unity game developer focusing in that area for over a decade. While I love playing around with these other game engines, that's where I spend most of my time and maybe you can see that in how I explain these things. The game's best practices really do apply across every one of those game engines, and you're gonna to wanna to apply them in the way that works best for each solution you choose. I wanna encourage you to check out this link here. You'll be able to see articles, repos of different projects, and tips for game dev in specific areas of best practices. So thanks for joining me on checking out best practices specifically in games. I'm available for remote contract hire. You can check out this link here to see more about my portfolio, availability, and my services. I also wanna say that in this series about best practices, we're gonna continue in the next video and get even more in depth. So stay tuned.